Hey, it's Hannah again. I am here to do another book talk. Today, hang on a sec, let me get it. I'm going to do The Selection by Kira Cass. I have it on my iPad because I didn't buy it in book form because I wasn't sure at first whether or not I wanted to read it because um, I'm not that girly. And, of course, the cover, even though it's gorgeous, it has, you know, pretty girly standards, everyone. There's a girl in this really nice blue dress, even though she looks very, um, fancy. I wasn't, I wasn't positive. I do like the, um, king and queen type thing, like royalty, I love reading about that, and princes and princesses, but, uh, I wasn't sure. So I didn't go into this book with really high expectations, but it definitely outdid them. I actually enjoyed it very much. So the selection is kind of dystopian, you could say. So after World War IV, what happened is somebody, this like billionaire philanthropist, started giving money to the government, the government, after we were taken over from China. And then he became not necessarily a dictator, but created an entirely new government, which became a kingdom. So Ilya became the kingdom that is America and Canada and Mexico, I believe. They weren't super sp specific about it, but it was it was really interesting to think about. And what they have is this caste system. So there is from one, which is the king, the queen, and the prince. They're all ones. And then it goes down to eights. Eights being the lowest of the low, the homeless people who don't have jobs, etc., etc. Our main character, America Singer, which is pretty funny. I wasn't sure about the name at first, but it grew on me and it works for the story. America Singer is a five, and the fives are artists and singers. So what they do is they have art or they perform for higher up people who can pay for that. So she performs for twos for their parties or for threes who can pay for her to come and um, sing at parties or like play the piano or be a violinist do something. So she does all that. The selection is something that the prince is old enough to marry. So they send out notices to all of the households with girls that are in the age range to marry the prince. They have to fill out the form, send in a picture of themselves, and um, t like the form has stuff like their age, their date, whether they're a virgin or not and if they can speak languages, what their talents are, etc, etc. And then they randomly select girls from each kind of district, and then 32 girls go to the palace, live there, and it's kind of like The Bachelor, but a more intense version a little bit. The quotes were because it's not entirely random. There are actually things that the king and queen look for in their new daughter-in-law and that's how they select them so america gets chosen and she goes to the palace and the rest is in the book so go and pick it up okay welcome back those who do not want to be spoiled just in case you didn't know if you had not read the book you're supposed to leave a little bit ago go ahead okay so this book was actually very surprising. I did like it, but I wasn't impressed with the writing so much because the world building was interesting to think about and it was pretty good, but I think it could have been done better. Kira Cass did not introduce the rebels properly, in my opinion, just because it was very kind of sudden and um, just, oh, they're they're coming in. They're going to destroy the castle. There's the north and the south, so it's kind of reminiscent of the Civil War, which is kind of funny. I'm pretty sure that they're going to do something with her. Like, she's either going to become pretty important in the rebel fight, because she's America, and it's the north and the south fighting over her. So, I don't know, I think that that'd be pretty cool. But, it did surprise me. It was really good. It started out pretty interesting. I was just trying to catch my bearings, and then she just went in really fast. That's the one thing that I didn't like is she didn't sit back and describe things. She was like, oh, this is happening. Oh yeah, that happened too. Good job. So, America is in love with Aspen. 
and they just kind of jump into the relationship. I know it's been two years, but I was like, not fast? Okay, go and break curfew for Aspen. It was really sweet. I did like it, but Aspen became a jerk. He was like, I, I realize the brutish mentality that guys are supposed to have. Like, I take care of you and do stuff. But he is taking care of his family already. And I think that I think that a real guy would have been happy to have his girlfriend surprise him with a feast after she was able to finally get her money because her mom made that deal with her. I don't understand her mom. Uh, she seems very supportive, but she's also really demanding and controlling and just wants some wants more and is trying to use her daughter to get there but i did like her and of course the rest of the family is awesome i love her father her father is so supportive and it's just reminded me of my dad and i kind of miss him because i'm at college so i really um related with her in that aspect i was like oh okay and then her sister is hilarious i love her sister she's just not entirely a comedic relief, but just kind of a joyous occasion where you're like, oh, that's so... her sister's so adorable. And then her little brother is so cute. I don't know why he couldn't come to the palace, though. Maybe because he was too young? But I wish that he could have come to the palace. And America does very well when she goes to the palace. I, I think at first I wasn't really expecting... I wasn't sure, because she seemed like a strong character at first, but then the first night she broke down. It's like, Mariko, what are you doing? She goes into the, um, out to the garden, you're like, you already know you can't go out of the garden, there's rebels. And she freaks out and almost faints in the, in the guard's arms. But then of course Prince Maxon comes along and saves her. And then she's very rude to him, I was like, Mariko, what are you doing? He's the prince, I realize that you're homesick, but be nice to the prince. <laughs> And of course, he is intrigued by her sarcasm and her snarkiness and her beauty. And of course he falls for her, which is really cute, and I did like that. So it worked out well in that aspect. I did not like Celeste. Oh my goodness, what is up with that girl? She just needs to leave. <laughs> This is not okay for you to still be in this competition. Don't appreciate it at all. I hope that she gets kicked out in the next book, just because... I know they're supposed to be a protagonist, but just... No! Leave, Celeste. Stop being a jerk. I'm glad that she does find Marley, though, and they can become friends. But I didn't think that Anna was gonna be gone like that. When she first met her on the plane, I was like, Oh, Anna's very regal, she's cute. And she's gonna go pretty far just because she's the first one. But then she gets eliminated in the first round, which is a good thing for Maxon to do just to get his feel of the girls. And if he didn't feel a spark, then they can leave. But I wasn't sure about that decision. But of course, I like Marley and she can stay. And they can be good friends. I'm glad that they have that connection. America's not alone. Okay, so when Aspen comes back, like, what are you doing? I didn't... <laughs> when they first saw him. Oh, why? America, why didn't you tell Maxon? You're actually just lying to him. Because they walk down the hallway, and they're walking together to go on another date, because of course America's his favorite and gets more dates than the rest of the girls. And they see Aspen, and she almost has a heart attack. She's like, Hello! Oh, he is from my town, and we grew up together. He's like, oh, I should post you outside her room to make sure that she's okay. I was like, tell him! Aspen broke your heart! What are you doing? You're... <sighs> this is a setup for trouble. And of course it is. Because then, Aspen comes into the room, and it's like, Whew. Do you love him? No? Ma. <laughs> what? You are cheating on him! You're cheating on Maxon, and Maxon does not deserve that. And it's just, it's not okay. You need to, you need to make up your mind. And at the end, I mean, she kind of does. Nope, not really. Because Aspen says, oh, I'll, I'll fight for you. I'm going to fight even harder. I'm not afraid of that suit. And she's like, well, I do, I do like Maxon, although I'm still in love with you. I'm like, America, <laughs> what are you doing with your life? 
so the book was pretty good overall. Um, give your thoughts down below if you think otherwise, or if you agree with me, or if you guys are gonna yell at me for not liking some of the things. But it was it was a little cliche, just the just the book in general, because every chapter ended with such a cliche sentence. It'd be like, oh, things can only go, or I hope that nothing else goes worse. You're like, something's gonna happen. So I'll see you guys later. Hope you have a fantastic day. Subscribe if you want, if you like these videos, and I will see you next time. Bye!